Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk about this tank right here. This is my four foot aquarium um, that features just mostly cryptocorins. Uh, it's a type of aquatic plant. It's my favorite aquatic plant. You can see there's many different types of cryptocorins in this tank and we'll go through them a little bit. But today I wanted to talk about the equipment that I'm using on this tank. There's not that many things that I'm using to run this tank but we'll talk about the filter the light uh, the co2 system and stuff like that and kind of my plans for it in the future but first of all just a quick update on the fish room we've still got a bunch of plants in here these are going outside soon because it is starting to get warmer these here are hibiscus so two hibiscus there this is a type of cactus I think I'm not too sure it's called like oxid oxipital ox oxy I can't remember it but let me search it up so it's called epiphyllum occipitalum or the Dutchman's pipe cactus it's what it's called it flowers it blooms at night in the midnight and it only blooms for a short period of time so it's a pretty special plant and yeah it's a cool plant but it doesn't belong inside we want to keep it outside so only during the winter we will bring these plants in here so that they can kind of just yeah, so that they don't have to die in the freezing cold outside. And this here is another hibiscus, a pretty cool one. Uh, it hasn't flowered yet, but this summer it should flower. And I'm hoping it does because it's got a pretty cool flower. But enough about flowers. Check this out. I've got my water filter hooked up onto the wall. So now I don't have to drag it all over the place to do water changes. It's stable. It's fixed onto the wall there. So all we have to do now is put a little like bench top working table here and this whole area will be set and I've been reading a lot of your comments I was talking about getting a table set up here so that I can have more working space and so many of you guys have amazing suggestions some of you said to put a, like a triangular table here that is such a good idea and I am considering that still but I, I kind of prefer a flat a straight table it'll kind of cover this up which which is kind of nice too, so we don't have to see that all the time. Um, but yeah, I might go for a triangular table, but I'm thinking of just staying with a regular rectangular uh, bench top right there. And then to add to that little bench top there, to give me more space to work on, I'm thinking of putting like a little, uh, what do you call that? Kind of like a cutting board that will fit right on here, and I'll be able to do more working stuff like when I need to. And then when I don't need it, I can just put it away over there or something underneath the sink and yeah I think it'll be pretty cool to do that let me know what your thoughts are on that and then the fish room is starting to take shape uh, looking a lot better we've got the nature style aquarium let me give you guys a quick update on that so we've just got a random cryptocorin just floating right there um, but yeah take a look at this the plants are growing in so nicely we've got some blackbeard algae on the driftwood but from a distance it, it looks pretty nice and I'm loving the color so far the red then you get slightly like orangish greenish plants and then it goes down to green so I'm really happy with the setup we've got the pink flamingo cryptocorns in this tank as well slowly growing getting bigger and bigger each day but very slow cryptocorns they grow really slow but they're really worth your time they're, they're worth keeping is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, this fish room is slowly coming together. More videos coming out. We're going to set up a tank right there very, very soon. It's actually this tank right here, um, a three-footer. But let's talk about this four-foot cryptocorin tank. So first of all, let's talk about the tank. It's a four-foot by 18 by 18 inch tank. And yeah, 120 centimeters. I really like the dimensions of this. And I think it's around 70 gallons if I convert it uh, to the U.S. gallons. We've got rainbow fish in here, just two types, the dwarf neon rainbow, also known as the Praecox rainbow melanotania Praecox, as well as the melanotania lacustris, the turquoise rainbow, which is this one right here. Really, really pretty fish. So we've got those fish in here, as well as two endless live bearers. And yeah, I'm not sure how much I want to talk in detail about this tank. There's just so much in here. Uh, the gravel I'm using is a, is a fine gravel called Oiso sand in Japanese. It's what we call it. Also known as sea gravel. There's, 
I don't think there's much information about it online, but it's the gravel that Takashi Amano used before he invented uh, the ADA Amazonia aqua soil. So before he invented the aqua soil, he was using this kind of gravel for all his planter tanks. So it's working pretty well. You can see the good growth in the cryptocorins. Uh, yeah, but now let's go on to the CO2. The CO2 diffuser isn't doing its job too well. You can see it's kind of dirty. I've got to clean it up, but I mean, it, it's working right now. Eventually, I'm hoping to get this tank completely off of CO2. I know the plants, the crypts can handle no CO2 growth, so in the future, we're going to slowly dial this down and hopefully um, we'll have a no CO2 planted aquarium here. But the diffuser, well not the diffuser, I mean the regulator I'm using on this tank is called the Town Bright Aquatic Equipment uh, Regulator. Um, I, I do like it, it's okay, it works well, but the thing I'm not really a fan of is the USB thing. I'm not sure why they chose to use a USB, let me plug this up, but you can see right here. So, yeah, I'm not so sure why it's USB, maybe it's a better thing. But maybe you guys can let me know, would you like it to be USB or not? It works okay, it does the job, so yeah, no no big complaints really. For the lighting system of this tank, uh, to light this tank up, I'm using two sets of LED lights. It's called the Kotobuki Flat LED, and I mean, it, it works really well, but having one of them, I, I initially just had one light, but it was kind of dim. It wasn't as bright as I'd hoped for it to be, so I have two of them running and it, it looks way better having two of them. And I think in the US this light is called the Phoenix Stingray, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, if you guys have the Phoenix Stingray, maybe you can compare. It does look pretty similar in my opinion, so I think this is like a rebrand of the Phoenix Stingray here in Japan. And also the LEDs, they, they basically just look like this, white with red and blue. LED lights. Alright, and I've also got a DIY lid on here. If I move this light back, you can kind of see how it works. Uh, just a DIY lid that I put together for this tank. Right now it doesn't fit perfectly because I've got the CO2 hose here, so yeah, with, without this thing it'll close nicely. But I've got videos on how I made this lid, so if you want to check that out, I'll definitely put it in the description below so you can go and check that out later. And now for the filter. Let me move this away. This is another hibiscus a cutting that we've been growing. And you can see it is growing quite nicely. It's got the roots down, so pretty excited to see that grow. Um, now for the filter. You can see right there, that's the filter pipe. We are just using an Eheim 2217 is what we call it here. 2217 canister filter. And I think this the classic series filters are probably the best. They're super simple to set up, super simple to use, and they just work really well. And inside the canister filter, there really isn't much in it. It's just um, Eheim Substrat Pro Media. You can see like two bags of it in there and then at the very bottom I've got a coarse sponge pad. Uh, but for planted tanks you really don't need any sponge or filter wool in your filters. Usually I don't have them inside but I guess because it came with a set, this filter, it came with a sponge pad inside, I just decided to use it anyways. But I'll probably be taking that out um, in the future because having more media is better. Uh, those sponges, filter wool, you really don't need them in a planted tank because if you have plants, you have gravel or soil or whatever, uh, the water is just going to be clear anyways. Just the bacteria is going to do the job for you. So yeah, but take a look at these rainbow fish and with the plants in the background, man, rainbow fish just look incredible. And the lacustris, this guy is like probably my favorite. Look at the colors of that. So, so nice looking. It's got that yellowish color as well. These two right here, amazing. I think these two are male. And then this one, the slightly smaller one here, might be a female. But yeah, super happy with this tank. The one thing I'm not so happy about is I recently lowered the level of CO2 that I'm injecting in this tank. You can see it's not that much right now. It's about like one bubble per second. And before I was adding three bubbles per second, I think. And when I was doing that, you could see the plants pearl so nicely in the afternoon. Uh, the plants would just give off oxygen bubbles and you can just see oxygen bubbles rising in this tank constantly and it was so nice to watch. But now, 
ever since I lowered it down to like one bubble a second, I'm not seeing much of that anymore. It kind of um, is disappointing. I do see some oxygen bubbles purling action with the crinum. It's really hard to see, but like right, right there where my finger is pointing, that's an oxygen bubble, it's purling, and that is so cool to see. But in the past, when I was adding more CO2 into this tank, there were so many of those bubbles. because The whole leaf would be covered in those um, oxygen bubbles, and now it's just very few. So I'm thinking of maybe adding more CO2 in this tank, but at the same time, I want to kind of make this a no CO2 tank, so I'm kind of debating on what I should do. Maybe you guys should let me know what I should do. But yeah, as for the plant, they all seem to be doing well. This one is one of my favorites in this tank right here. This cute little green plant. I just love how it like stands straight and it's just such a nice... I love the leaves on this plant. It's called the Cryptocorn Pontiderifolia and it's got a cool name too. So that is one of my current favorites and I don't think it's gonna um, ever not be my favorite. So yeah, really nice little green coloration too. Um, but yeah, as for some of the special plants in this tank, we've got the Cryptocorn Spiralis Red. This um, nice red long-leaved Cryptocorn. It's currently in a pot right now in that green little cup, uh, but soon we'll be taking that out. And then another plant, I, here's another Cryptocorn Pontiderifolia, but this one's in a little pot. I'm planning to plant that in another tank. Cryptocorn Wenti Real Green. I've planted some of it in this tank over here, um, and then this one I'll use in another tank. So yeah, I just got to get more tank set up so that I can use up some of these plants that I've got. Um, but yeah, that that's basically it. There's nothing really special about this tank. I've got some Anubias Barteri uh, Nana just floating in the back there, and it's flowered for me quite a bit. Uh, you can actually see one of the flowers at the top up there. That's a flower. Yeah, so, huh, really hard to focus since there's, since there's so many plants in this tank, so I apologize, but we'll definitely make more videos on this tank. If any of you have questions about this tank, just let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I can make a video about it, or maybe I can just answer you down below. The reason why I wanted to make this video today is because I got a question, what equipment do I use on this tank? So I just wanted to answer that, so I hope you like this video, kind of raw, not really that entertaining but just to give you an idea of how this tank is running. And the plants I've got for this tank is very simple. Mostly cryptocorns. The only plants that won't be cryptocorns in this tank is this nice crinum that's in the middle, as well as the little lotus that's at the back right now. Kind of not doing that well, but yeah, that lotus right there looks like a really cool plant and hopefully it'll take off. It was doing really well until I lowered the CO2, so. Yeah, I'm not sure. As always, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. And let me know what you guys think about this tank so far.